welcome back to the second part of determining horizontal intercepts of various functions. Again, for a quick review, if you look at the graph below, notice how all the points on the horizontal axis have a y value or function value of zero, which indicates to find the horizontal intercepts, we always set f of x or y equal to zero, and then solve for the input variable, which is normally x. Let's look at some more examples. Here we have f of x equals the cube root of the quantity 4x minus 6. This is a radical function, or more specifically, a cube root function. To determine the horizontal intercept, we set f of x equal to 0 and then solve for x. This gives us the equation 0 equals the cube root of the quantity 4x minus 6. And now to solve for x, we must undo the cube root by cubing both sides of the equation cubing will undo the cube root. So zero cubed is still zero, we have zero equals, and now on the right, cubing undoes the cube root, leaving us with the radicand of four x minus six. And now we solve for x, the next step is to add six to both sides, which gives us six equals four x, and then we divide both sides by four. Simplifying, we have x equals six fourths which simplifies to three halves because six and four share a common factor of two. Which means the horizontal intercept is the ordered pair three halves comma zero, or if we want 1.5 comma zero. Three halves equals 1.5. We will verify this graphically in just a moment. Next we have f of x equals 19. Because the output is always the constant 19, this is called a constant function. To find the horizontal intercept, we set f of x equal to zero. Notice when we do this, we get the equation zero equals 19, which is never true or not true, which indicates there is no horizontal intercept. Let's look at the graph of these two functions. For the cube root function, notice how the horizontal intercept is this point here, which we now know is represented by the ordered pair three halves comma zero, or if we wanted 1.5 comma zero. And then looking at the constant function, notice how it does not intersect the horizontal axis, and therefore it does not have a horizontal intercept. Next we have f of x equals x cubed minus four x. This is a degree three polynomial function, which we call a cubic function. To find the horizontal intercepts, we set f of x equal to zero which gives us the equation zero equals x cubed minus four x. Let's see if we can solve this by factoring. Remember the first step in factoring is to factor out the greatest common factor, which here would be x, giving us zero equals x times the quantity x squared minus four. From here we should recognize x squared minus four is a difference of squares, and therefore we have zero equals x times two binomial factors, where one binomial factor is x plus two, and the other is x minus two. The product on the right is equal to zero when the first factor of x is equal to zero, or when the factor of x plus two equals zero, or when the factor of x minus two is equal to zero. Solving for x, we already have x equals zero here. Solving for x here, we have x equals negative two. And solving for x here, we have x equals positive two because we have three solutions, there are three horizontal intercepts. One is zero comma zero, another is negative two comma zero, and the third horizontal intercept is two comma zero. Next we have f of x equals the quantity x plus one divided by the quantity x minus two. Because we have a ratio or quotient of two linear functions, this is a rational function. To find the horizontal intercept, we set f of x equal to zero, which gives us zero equals the quantity x plus one divided by the quantity x minus six. To solve the rational equation, we will clear the fraction from the equation by multiplying both sides of the equation by the quantity x minus six. On the left side, x minus six times zero is still zero, so we have zero equals. On the right side, simplifying before multiplying, x minus six divided by itself simplifies to one, leaving us with x plus one. 
solve for x, we subtract 1 on both sides, giving us x equals negative 1. And therefore, the horizontal intercept is negative 1, comma, 0. Let's verify these results graphically. For the cubic function, notice how we have three horizontal intercepts, 1, 2, 3. And the ordered pairs for these three points are negative 2, comma, 0, 0, comma, 0, and 2, comma, 0. And then for the rational function, the horizontal intercept is this point here. Notice how this is scaled by 2's. The ordered pair for this point is negative 1, comma, 0. Let's look at two more examples. Here we have f of x equals x. This is a linear function, but it's a special linear function because the input and the output are both x. This is called the identity function. To find the horizontal intercept, we set f of x equal to 0, which gives us 0 equals x. And because x equals 0, the horizontal intercept is the origin, 0, comma, 0. And then finally, we have f of x equals the absolute value of x minus 3. Because of the absolute value, this is an absolute value function. To find the horizontal intercept, we set f of x equal to 0, which gives us 0 equals the absolute value of x minus 3. To solve an absolute value equation, we first isolate the absolute value, so we add 3 to both sides, which gives us 3 equals the absolute value of x. From here, because we know the absolute value of positive 3 is equal to 3, and the absolute value of negative 3 is equal to 3, we know this x inside the absolute value can be equal to positive 3 or negative 3. So this gives us two equations, x is equal to positive 3 or x is equal to negative 3. And these are already solved for x. And therefore, we know we have two horizontal intercepts. One horizontal intercept is the ordered pair 3, comma, 0. And the other is negative 3, comma, 0. And again, let's verify this graphically. For the identity function, we can see the horizontal intercept, which is also the vertical intercept, is the origin with the ordered pair 0, comma, 0. And for the absolute value function, we have two horizontal intercepts, one here at negative 3, comma, 0, and another here at 3, comma, 0. So our graphs do verify our work is correct. I hope you found this helpful.